let's look at this set now. <clears throat> In a small company, there are 10 employees. P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y. Each one in a different grid. 10 employees, so 10 different grids. Sequentially, grade 1 is the lowest grade and grade 10 is the highest. Grades 1 to 10 were further divided into three categories. Grade 1 to 3 in category 1, grade 4 to 6 in category 2, and grade 7 to 10 in category 3. So category 3 has the highest population, has 4 people. Every other category has 3 people. Each employee had a certain part of his salary package as variable pay. However, the employees are eligible to get only a certain percentage of that variable pay. That is, and that particular percentage is called percentage of variable payout. And is decided according to the annual performance rating, APR, assigned to them after annual performance appraisal. APR is the annual performance rating. PVP is uh, par percentage of variable payout. Okay. The annual performance rating, APR are integers from 1 to 5, where sequentially rating 1 is the lowest and rating 5 is the highest. In table 1, okay, so rating 1 is the lowest, rating 5 is the highest. And in table 1, if you get an APR of 1 or 2, you get 0% return. For 3, you get 50. For 4, you get 90. For 5, you get 130. Oh, that is only for category 1. When it is category one, the payouts are different. When it is category two, the payouts are different. When it is category three, the payouts are different. Okay. So table one is this. In table two, partial data regarding the grade, PVP and APR of 10 employees are given. Partial data. Okay. So for these 10 particular employees, let's see. For P, I'm getting a 40% partial variable payout. So this can only happen if he gets an APR of three, in category three, APR of three, and he's in category three. For Q, he's in grade four, so category two, category two, and he's received an APR of two, so his PVP percentage variable payout is zero, because for two, you get zero. For R, it is zero. It could be category one or category three, as of now, I don't know, so I will not write it down. For S, he is in grade 1, so category 1. Category 1, he got a rating of 4, so he gets a 90% uh, percentage of variable payout. For T, no information is available. For you, I've got a 70. This is only possible if you are category 2. And you get an APR of 4. Okay. For V, what do we know? 7, grade 7. So all I know is he's in category 3. Okay. W, we know nothing. For X, do we know anything? He's got an APR of 5. He could be any category. Nothing is known. For Y, we know he's category 3. Okay. He's category 3. And he must have gotten an APR of 1 or 2. So just put this down, 1 or 2. Okay, let's see. Employees belonging to a particular category received a distinct APR. For example, PQR belong to category 1, then they must have received distinct APR from among 1 to 5. Okay, so 4 and 4. Right now, 4 and 4, category 1, category 2. Yes, this is fine. And I don't have other distinct scores. Okay. I don't have other dis I don't have other overlapping scores. So nothing. This I will take care of when I'm solving. First question. Now see, prior to the questions, if you can pay attention, every question here starts off with an if, which is to say, which is another way of confirming that whatever work we have done so far is right, because we have not been able to fill up this entire table. Some parts of it we have. But most parts of it we can't. And that is okay because there are multiple cases. Now the case part of it for every question, what I'll do is I'll write it with red pen. And once that question is done, I'll move on to the next one. If X is in grade 8, okay, if he is in grade 8, then he gets category 3. And with 5, he gets a 100% payout. These things are known. These things are no. 
category three. Then what could be the numerically maximum grade of T? Numerically maximum grade of T we are looking for. Okay. Now, because look at this, I have one category three, I have another category three, I have another category three, I have another category three. I have four people in category three and seven, eight, nine is already done. So this person being in grade 10 is also confirmed. Anything else I can infer? Nothing at all. So now when we are looking for numerically the maximum grade of T, 10, 9, 8, 7, all of them have been used up. So the numerically maximum grade of T that I can assign is 6. So answer will be option B, 6. Before we move on to the next one, I will get rid of all the red markings. Because these are not confirmed. They are only valid for the question. Next, if T received an APR of 4, T received an APR of 4. Now see. Then what is the PVP received by T? PVP received by T. Now see, category 1, the person receiving 4 is known. Category 2, person receiving 4 is known. So T now has to be in category 3. In category 3, the person getting APR of 4 gets a 60% payout. So the answer to this question has to be C. Why we are doing this is on account of this condition. Employees belonging to a particular category received a distinct APR. So category 1, the guy who got 4 is already known. Category 2, the guy who got 4 is already known. So category, so if T has received 4, he must be from category 3 and his payout would be 60%. This is known. Okay. Next bit. If R received an APR 2, R received an APR 2. Both T and W received an APR 3. T and W received an APR 3. Okay. Then which of the following employees could never belong to the same category? Okay. APR 3. He has to be category 1 or 2. He has to be category 1 or 2. And he has to be category 1 or 3. This much is known. So let's see. R, S and W. R, S. Category 1, category 1 and category 1. R, S and W. 2, 4, 3, category 1, category 1, category 1. This is possible. So cannot be the answer. R, S, T. Category 1. Category 1 and Category 1. Yes, 2, 4 and 3. All three of them can belong to the same category. Category 1. This cannot be the answer. P, V, X, Y. If there are four members mentioned. It has to be Category 3. Let's see. P, V, X and Y. Y is definitely Category 3. V is definitely Category 3. P is definitely Category 3. Can this fellow be a Category 3? If I put him in Category 1, this fellow being in category 3 is possible. Yes, X can be in category 3. 1, 2, 5, 4, 3. Yes, very much possible. This is also possible. Should not be the answer. By default, this should be the answer. But let's go ahead and check this option also. Q, U, and R. Q has got category 2. U has got category 2. But R cannot be category 2 because Q and R both have... Uh, obtained uh, annual performance rating as two, they cannot be from the same category. So this has to be our answer, option D. Okay, for moving on, remove all the red marks. None of this is final. This is only for that particular question. Now, last question. If we received an APR of five, we received an APR of five, then we must get 100% PVP. Okay. 100% PVP. This is done. Then how many distinct grades could T possibly belong to? How many distinct grades could T possibly belong to? Okay. So who is category 3? Category 3. Let us see, does this specify category for someone else or 100%? No, as in category for someone else, does it specify? Not really. So right now I'll write down all grades. 1, 2, 
थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन एंड टेन ओके कैन कैटेगरी वन इज ऑलरेडी एलोकेटेड टू एस कैटेगरी फोर इज ऑलरेडी एलोकेटेड टू क्यू सॉरी ग्रेड फोर इज ऑलरेडी एलोकेटेड टू क्यू सेवन इज ऑलरेडी एलोकेटेड टू वी एंड वाई इज ऑलरेडी एलोकेटेड टू नाइन सो दीज आर डन कैन टी बी टू फॉर टू वी वी नीड स्पेस इन कैटेगरी वन यस वी हैव स्पेस इन कैटेगरी वन सो दिस इज पॉसिबल कैन ई बी गिवेन थ्री वी नीड स्पेस इन कैटेगरी वन यस दिस इज पॉसिबल फॉर फाइव वी नीड स्पेस इन कैटेगरी टू Two people in category two are known. Yes, this is also possible. Can six be given? We need space for one category two person. Yes, we have that. Eight. We have three people in category three. One person in category three is still left, so he can be eight also, and he can be ten also. So there are six distinct grades. There are six distinct grades that T can possibly belong to. so the answer to the final question has to be option d and that is the entirety of this set again a fun set and uh, made easier for me because i can write on the screen and erase stuff but if you were doing it on notebook if you were doing it on the notebook this time you would have to necessarily create this in your notebook additionally when you create that table make sure it's a large table make sure it's a large table let's say if it was a 2 by 3 table this is what i tend to do in my notebook if i get a particular data part i put it down here a and whatever other inferences i am able to draw after this is done i cut it out and there is enough space left in the boxes for me so that the next questions condition also i can implement the next questions condition i can also implement make a large table don't make small tables make large tables so that even if you cancel stuff out you still have space left for subsequent conditions that come up in questions that will be all for this particular set mm -hmm.